the subject i want to discuss is very much related to the month of ramadan you know in us allah subhanahu wa taala has put two powers one power is our desires our needs and our inclinations the ayah i read in front of you in which allah subhanahu wa taala has put this mahabba this love for women for mal for our children this is a natural inclination that allah subhanahu wa taala has put in us so on one end the power of desires and needs and on the other end allah subhanahu wa taala has given us another power to control these desires to control these inclinations to control on our needs and our wishes and there is a constant struggle between these two powers you know our soul is made out of two one we call it animal life bahimi which is made out of dirt all our weaknesses all our desires all our needs we get hungry we need rest all this comes from because we are made out of dirt then allah subhanahu wa taala has put in us another personality which is the other part of our being and that is malaki that is our spirit that is our ruh which has come from the heavens there is a constant struggle between our bahimi animal like human structure and our malaki the angel like structure of our body our bahimi the animal like instincts desires they pull us towards earth towards dirt and our malaki angel like personality it wants us to raise towards the sky towards allah subhanahu wa taala there is a constant struggle between these two month of ramadan is to decrease our bahimi animal like instincts to control our desires to control our needs to control our inclinations so our malaki the angel like qualities we have it can get spiritually uplifted so we can get more closer to allah subhanahu wa taala my brothers and my sister this drill this exercise of ramadan is really to empower our soul over our bahimi and animal like body this ramadan is all about happiness of the soul our soul gets very happy excited when our animal like instincts desires and needs they get checked you know islam is such a beautiful religion that it provides us a balanced life islam is against rahbaniyat islam does not want people to run away from this worldly life and go and live in a jungle islam is not like christianity that leave your desires leave your natural instincts and inclinations islam gives a natural way of life that when you fulfill your needs when you fulfill your desires when you fulfill your inclinations rather allah subhanahu wa taala rewards you for that allah subhanahu wa taala writes as a hasanat in your amal in your deeds that's why in the famous hadith when somebody asked prophet sallam if i go to my wife prophet sallam say this will be a good deed for you and he says even going to wife is a good deed prophet sallam say yes because if you do those thing in a illegal way that's a sin and you will get punished so when we nourish our body we take food we rest we fulfill our needs and require it's a reward from allah subhanahu wa taala what a beautiful religion islam that which provides us a balanced life my brothers and and my sisters so during this month of ramadan we have to make sure 
Many of us we think that Ramadan is all about you know fasting and abstaining from food and other things from dusk to dawn. Wallahi, this is not just about that. This is to control my bahimi, my animal-like body and desires. That's how when I say in every salah, Iyya kana abudu wa iyya kana stain, I cannot fulfill this promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I seek badat from you and I will follow whatever your command is. Iyya kana abudu wa iyya kana stain. I cannot fulfill this promise until and unless I have my animal like body inside me, my physical body, my body which is made out of dirt in my control. This is a scholar they call your nafs. Your nafs is like, like a horse that you have to control. If you will not control, then it will take you in any direction it wants. Fasting is how to control our nafs, how to control our desires, and how to keep all this checked. My brothers and my sisters, and wallahi, successful are the people in the month of Ramadan. They go through all the difficulties and hardships of this fasting so they can have their malaki, their angel-like qualities highlighted inspired, uplifted. So after Ramadan, they can be a different Muslim. They will be a different human being. They have better relationship with Quran. They are more careful. They are more conscious Muslim. They are better in abstaining from kabair, from kabair sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in Quran. So they will have a better conscious, responsible Muslim life after Ramadan, then they are, they are the ones that we should congratulate. But if it happens that Ramadan goes and then we are back to square one where I was, I am no different than what I was before Ramadan. My mamalat, my dealings, my salah, my relationship with Quran, my taluk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to square one like it was before Ramadan. That means that I was not able to keep the promise Iyya kana abudu wa Iyya kana stain because I failed to control this nafs so that I can continue even after Ramadan. Remember one thing brothers, people who really want to do big things in life, they are the one who can control their bahimi, the animal-like qualities, people who can control their desires, people who can control their inclinations, people who can control their needs. They are the ones they can do big. Otherwise, people think that they are living the life, actually life is living them. Life is taking advantage of them. So if you want to do big things in life, then these are the things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to get checked. People who are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplifts their spirit, their ruh, their nafs goes down and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells about them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا وَلَهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا My brothers and my sisters, these are the people, once they control their bahimi part, Allah uplifts their soul. You know, like we eat, we enjoy the food. Food is delicious. When we live comfortable, comfortable life, we enjoy that comfortable life. You know, when we fulfill our needs of dunya, we feel good about it. Am I right? Same way when you fulfill the needs of your soul, your soul feels happy. Your soul feels halawa, sweetness, like our human body, the physical body, 
feels the test of food and ease and comfort same way our soul feels the comfort sweetness and halawa imam ibn qayyim rahimatullah ali says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the halawa and sweetness in three things sweetness for the soul it is impossible that if allah has provided us all the means to comfort and provide sweetness and halawa to our animal body how come allah can leave us without providing us means and tools to provide sweetness and halawa to our soul imam ibn qayyim says three things allah has given us in this life and that can give us the sweetness and halawa of the iman number 1 is quran number 2 is salah and number 3 is zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala wallahi the people who achieve that like we as a ignorant muslim that we are so much indulge to only fulfill the needs of my physical body and we have forgotten we don't even know how the soul halawa and sweetness taste same way the people who once taste the sweetness of their soul wallahi they ignore the sweetness and halawa of their this physical body like we have forgotten that what does that mean the halawa of salah the sweetness of salah the halawa and sweetness of zikr what is salah halawa and sweetness of reading quran but people who test once the sweetness in reading quran the sweetness in doing zikr of allah subhanahu wa taala sweetness in remembering allah subhanahu wa taala in salah they never go want to go back from that sweetness and you and me we all experience time to time if you are in a mahfil of zikr if you go for umrah and hajj if you are in the among the people of remembrance of allah subhanahu wa taala your soul feels very relaxed your soul feels very happy because your soul is tasting the sweetness of the halawa of that zikr and that mahfil and that majlis my brothers and my sisters today i am going to share with you few examples and wallahi these examples will show you that the people who attain that uplifting of their soul that they can really meet allah subhanahu wa taala every day every second of their life once they experience that halawa through their soul they live a life that this dunya becomes jannah for them their every day becomes ramadan for them and as one of the sheikh has said their death time becomes like a eid for them they live like living in ramadan every day and they wait for death time because they know that whatever life they have lived they are waiting for a better reward from allah subhanahu wa taala so their life becomes like ramadan and their death become like eid for them hazrat abdullah bin umar came to hazrat asma radhiyallahu ta'ala anha when hazrat abdullah bin zubair the son of hazrat asma was executed in makka by hajjaj bin yusuf and his body was hanged in the middle of the street for many days past Abdullah bin Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu son of Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu comes to Hazrat Asma daughter of Hazrat Abu Bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he says to Asma radhiyallahu ta'ala ana Asma don't worry about the body of Abdullah bin Zubair his soul is in peace his soul is in heaven and that's what matters where the soul is don't worry about the body of Abdullah bin Zubair Hazrat Asma replies to Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar she says that i know people have cut the head of Yahya alayhis salam and given to this woman and i know that cutting the head of Yahya has not hurt Yahya because Yahya's soul went to Allah subhanahu wa taala end of the day importance is 
how your soul is received by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna allazina qalu rabbun Allah summa staqamu tatanazzalu alayhimul malayakatu Allah takhafu wa la ta'zanu. My brothers and my sisters, that's what the ayah reminds you and me that we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah gives us tawfiq that when our soul departs from this dunya, our souls is received by angels and they say nothing to our soul but salam. Salam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we were your friend in this dunya and we will be your friends in that dunya also. There is a story in that article written, written about Sheikh from Egypt, Salahuddin Sultan. He says, you know, Egyptian government had put us in jail. They were able to put our physical body in jail. But you know, that provided us the opportunity, opportunity to develop relationship with Quran. Opportunity to develop relationship with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that has provided us opportunity to uplift our spirit, our ruh. They have deprived us living with physical body with our family and our kids, enjoy our time with them. They have deprived us that our physical body cannot taste the good food. They have deprived us from visiting you know, the places we want to visit. But Wallahi, Allah has granted us through our spirit, in our dreams, that we have enjoyed life with our kids and our families and our children. We may have not enjoyed with physical body. Allah has given our spirit such a power in our dreams that we were able to taste foods that nobody can even imagine to taste those food with this physical body. Allah has allowed us to visit places through our spirit in our dreams that we cannot even dream in our real life to visit with our physical body. So these are the people, once they have reached to that status, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through their spirit, through their soul, takes them to the places that you and me, we cannot even imagine. And when they depart from this dunya, they depart with sakina, with sukoon, because they are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell them, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbi kiradiyatam mardiya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati that you have lived all that life to please me and you have done your job, you have done your work, you did hard work. It was difficult for you to live on the path prescribed by me, but you fulfilled your promise and now it's time for me to fulfill my promise and I give you permission to enter my Jannah. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wallahi whatever days are left, Let's try to take advantage of every second of Ramadan. Allah has given you and me this tawfiq. Many of our friends, many of our beloved friends who used to sit, you know, in this masjid, in these ranks, they are not among us. And they have left. They were here last year. Not anymore. Allah has given you and me this tawfiq. Young or old, boy or girl, if Allah has given you this tawfiq that you have witnessed this Ramadan, then I will say that let's take advantage of every second left of this Ramadan. And I say salam to brothers, salam to those brothers, they work all day, they work all day. And wallahi, I can see the tiredness on their faces, but they are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tarawi Salah. I know they are pushing themselves their physical body is asking them to go home and rest. But they push themselves, no, I'm going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what needed. That is what needed if we want to uplift our soul. That our physical body wants rest. But I want to make sure that my physical body suffer. My physical body go through pain. Because that pain is liked by my soul. That pain is liked by my spirit. 
and that's how I'm going to be able to uplift my spirit. So after Ramadan, inshallah, Allah will give me this tawfiq that I will live a life of Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I will be able to fulfill the promise that I will have a different life, different Muslim, different human being. Allah.